Good afternoon. So it's been a while since I've done um, a new video purely because with everything going on this year, um, not been purchasing nowhere near the amounts I've been purchasing over the previous years. But those lovely people at Shaco have sent me um, a quite phenomenal new release. Um, so for anybody who don't know Shaco, they're a, a German die cast manufacturer more renowned for their cars, uh, but do branch out and do a number of other things, including helicopters uh, and aviation. You may remember last year I reviewed their Junkers JU-52s, which were a really, really good price point and a really, really good quality. And I'll get one out um, once this is out the box to compare sizes. Uh, but this has been on the agenda for around about two, two and a half, three years. Um, pre-pandemic um, is this wonderful Lockheed Super Connie or Constellation is more Connie you know, in the Lufthansa scheme. There's a a second scheme, a K&M one, which is due out, uh, I believe it's December. Um, but the first one, of course, is Lufthansa Super uh, Constellation um, is the first release. Um, and I'm now going to pause and take this out of the box because otherwise I'm halfway down the, the pool table because it's that big. It's clearly the biggest piece of die cast I'm yet to buy. Um, but like I said, I'll get some more airliners out to show you uh, the comparable size. So before I get it all, all put together, I um, just want to show you a picture of what she looks like in the box. Um, you know, it is absolutely huge. So there's... Um, on the on the rear of the packaging, there's uh, some information in German and English. But we've also got the actual sizes of the uh, aircraft itself and the weight. So the scale is one seventy two for anybody who you know, I didn't mention that at the start. So you know this is big. This is very very big. Uh, so the wingspan is fifty three centimeters. The length of the body is forty eight. Uh, centimeters and it weighs just shy of two kilograms so 1950 grams so it's a big old piece of die cast uh, as you can see big old hefty um, display stand down you can display it either wheels up or wheels down of course I'll be wheels down because that's the way I roll um, and the undercarriage comes in two sort of packs of packaging so you've got your, your wheels and that in there um, uh, I'm guessing the up undercarriage is already in it, but we'll have a look at that when I get it out. And you've got the remaining bits and pieces there um, to, to fit on as well. So let's get this out of the box and see what she displays like. So here she is out of the box. Um, it's not often a bit of die cast comes along and blows your mind, but this is up there. Um, I will do some comparison shots with a DC3. Uh, and a Chico JU-52 as well after. Um, but first impressions, wow, it's big. Um, and second impressions, very heavy. Um, the uh, fuel tanks on the on the edge of the wings, they don't come fitted, so it depends how you fancy having it displayed. Uh, I've gone for the more authentic look, so I'll have the fuel tanks fitted, and they simply just slide off. Um, no friction at all, they literally just clip off. Um, what I would say is that under, where they've been test fitted, there's a slight marking underneath. So for me, it's better to have them fitted. Um, the detailing is really, really good on it as well. Um, you know, it's a best way to describe it is it's probably not as detailed as a Colgi model in terms of detailing, but it's just like an overscaled sort of Gemini 1200 or 1114 or a 1400. Uh, model. The windows are actual windows, they're not painted on, which is great. Uh, the paint finish is absolutely superb. Um, one minor criticism, uh, the wheels don't turn, uh, but then it isn't a toy and you wouldn't want to play with something this big. Um, but overall, absolutely outstanding bit of kit. Uh, Shuko have taken their time clearly um, and it's really paid off. If you look at the mould as well, um, there's no real issues. Uh, what I would say, as I just noticed, one of my, there we go, it clicks back on nicely. So one of the towels there was slightly loose, but you looking at the mould, there's no joins or no gaps. It's a real, real chunky bit of kit. It's fantastically made, fantastically finished. Um, the other minor little detail I would pick up on um, is underneath you've got, I don't know if you can see, I 
I can't really move it down. Um, underneath you, um, where the display stand sits, it, there could have been two little panels there. Um, it's not a massive noticeable thing, but you can see the, um, if I move that up slightly, oh, as the fuel tank's fallen off there, the detail underneath is excellent as well. Um, brilliant, brilliant finish on this aircraft. Not quite sure where I'm going to display it yet, but we'll find that out later. Um, but uh, a little bit about the aircraft. So the Constellation was launched, the original Constellation was launched in 1943. Uh, sort of towards the war's end um, and that was a much shorter aircraft in terms of it was about, about 5.75 metres shorter in length then 1950 the uh, the Super Connie was launched and for those who have been to Flying Legends over the years this is why I hold quite an affinity for the Constellation um, we were lucky to have the Breitling Super Constellation which was based in Switzerland attend several times uh, an, an amazing aircraft, especially trying to land on an airfield as small as Duxford at times. Uh, now I've just got memories of the blue flame sort of coming out of the um, out of the exhaust as, it, as you know it was coming in on a quite overcast day. Brilliant aircraft. Unfortunately, that um, has now been dismantled and sold on after Breitling took away their sponsorship. Uh, and is stored at Bremgarten in Germany, owned by another consortium. And hopefully they'll get that back in the air at some point. But I believe it had some sort of wing spar issues. Um, so it was quite a costly bit of kit. And for anybody who's been following sort of the historic aviation scene, Lufthansa themselves actually invested $163 million into a Lufthansa um, Starliner. Uh, and this was being rebuilt in America, uh, but they pulled the plug a couple of years ago and it was now shipped over to uh or it's over in germany somewhere um and there's, it's been announced it's going to be put back together but it's not going to be a flyer uh it's going to be put alongside their xju 52 which you, again used to attend flying legends and used to do passenger flights over london quite regularly which is now also grounded because i believe after the accident in switzerland uh lufthansa unfortunately uh didn't want to risk for insurance purposes and whatnot uh, so the only Super Connie that is left flyable, in my, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, is the Qantas example down in Australia. Um, but hopefully at some point we should have a, a standard constellation uh, which is being restored at Chino in California for Rod Lewis, uh, which is, um, I think it's a Korean War veteran one uh, with the radar on, it's called Bataan. Uh, and that should be gracing the skies in the next few years, fingers crossed as well. I know it did a ferry flight in order to get to Chino, which worked out a lot cheaper. But they're the only options in terms of constellations back in the air, because they are obviously quite expensive aircraft to run. So a little bit more about the Super Connie. Um, the extra fuel tanks on the end there uh, hold, or held I should say, another 2,200 litres of fuel, which increased its range to, to just over 8,000 kilometres. Um, it had a top speed of just shy of 600 kilometers per hour as well. So uh, I can carry uh, up to 99 passengers with a, a crew generally of around about four to 10, dependent on obviously cabin crew as well. Um, so let's go and get a few more of the airliners out just to show you the comparable size of how big this bad boy is. So here they are out in all their glory, just as a comparable size. So you've got on your left, you've got the Shuko JU-52. This one is the Manfred von Richthofen, um, registration D-A-B-I-K, um, and a great, obviously, accompaniment to Corgi's Immelmann II. And to your right, you've got the Camel Caravan to Berlin, DC-3 of the US Air Force, made by Corgi. So <laughs> the real scale of it really comes home now when you look at all three of them together. Uh, also, a little bit of extra detail around the aircraft. So. The aircraft's registration is D, obviously for Deutschland, and then ALOP. This aircraft was built in 1955 and a really, really short life um, and was scrapped in 1967, believe it or not. So it didn't really have a long sort of airliner life. Um, but it's one of 99 of the Super Connies built um, uh, and served Lufthansa. So a little bit of history around that aircraft. So it's not one that unfortunately exists anymore in a museum anywhere. It has been sadly met the scrap man many, many years ago. So just to, again, just sort of compare the actual sizes. If I take the DC-3 to the towel, 
it's literally half the size. So you will need a little bit of display space for it. Um, but again, you know, just to sort of emphasize the weight. Uh, oh, not that down there. Uh, same with the JU52, you know, take that to the tower, it's not even to the wing. Uh, that's how that how small it is in comparable size. So, um, it's, you know, that's, I've also done a little bit of Googling and finding out how much it is. This retails on Shuko's website, which I'll put the link in the description below. I'm going to do uh, a, quite a detailed photo analysis of it as well. Uh, it's 119 euros, which at the current exchange rate, for anybody who's from uh, the United Kingdom at the moment is scratching their heads around. It works out about £103. Obviously, you might have to pay some import tax on that if it's coming direct from Germany, um, but it wouldn't be horrific. And, you know, just to put it in perspective, Korg is, um, you know, Vulcan, which is probably comparable in size, is going for 240 quid now off the website. So in terms of value, it's fantastic. Obviously, it's a bit of a niche uh, market. 172 airliners is something which is relatively new. Uh, but if you, like I said, if you're a Warbirds fan or you've seen these aircraft gracing the display circuit over the years, it's well worth having in the collection. Um, I think this is, you know, it's one of those pieces of die cast that has blown me away. It's, you know, it's not often you get something out the the bag or the box, sorry, I should say, and you look at it and you go, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, all right. You know, you go with other Spitfires. This is, you know, it's not, you wouldn't want too many of them in your collection because I think your floor, if you lived in a flat, I think your floors would cave in or you, if you had them up in your loft, because um, they are a hefty bit of die cast, um, but fantastic nonetheless. I'll just quickly pause the video and put it onto the stand to see what it looks like on the stand. There you go, there she is up on the stand. Really, really solid stand. Um, obviously a big base for a big aircraft. You've got nearly two kilograms worth of aircraft there. Uh, but it's really nice and firmly clicked in. The clicking was nice. It's, it's obviously different. It's not a cradle, like whether uh, your Hobby Masters or your Corgis. This is literally clicked into the actual aircraft itself, but there's no movement there whatsoever. Um, really, really displays the lineage of the, the Super Connery uh, really nicely, as you can see. Uh, and also helps to show you guys some of the detail in around it as well. Um, but look, highly recommended. I think they've done a brilliant job on this Shuko. Um, and, you know, it might be something we can do a poll to see what would be next for them in terms of, um, you know, the modern airliner, whether it would be something like a, a DC-4 or a Comet or something along them lines. But just imagine what a Comet would look like in this scale. Uh, phenomenal bit of kit. Uh, but yeah, but that's it for me today. Um, again, just to reiterate the size of the of the aircraft, I'll bring in a Spitfire to put alongside her, uh, and there you go. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, it's it's a serious chunk of aircraft for the money. Uh, in my eyes, absolutely brilliant value. Uh, just a big shout out to Laura uh, at Shuko who sorted this out for me. Really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, it's, you know, I think they've done a brilliant job. The delay was clearly worth the wait. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like I said, I'll put some pictures up on the page on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you haven't joined them already, please do. It's a great place to meet fellow like-minded uh, people. Um, hope you have a great weekend. Uh, and I'll hopefully speak to you quite soon. All the best. Take care.